Welcome to Facebook Live. Meet the host. Another episode. This time we're here in New York City with my guest, John Bastow. Happy to be here with Mike Rippey. And uh, this is really cool. We, uh, we've been around the country. We were back last week from Denver. And now we're here in New York and uh, with the fitness guru himself. Uh, first off, thanks for joining us. I'm glad to be on Meet the Host. Yeah, this is this is super exciting because I think of of all the hosts we've so far had and shared with you guys at Meet the Host, John is probably the one that has the greatest following and has done uh, so much, certainly in the world of fitness. So uh, we were just talking before we even started uh, about a bunch of stuff, and uh, so you're here today in the city doing a bunch of meetings, yeah? Yeah, um, I was here pretty much uh, doing a lot of meetings um, for potential other shows. Sure. Interesting, we don't really have much to do with fitness. But um, it's, it's funny because I have like the whole fitness realm, yeah. and then I also do pop culture and entertainment news and other stuff like that. Um, but I had a bunch of meetings for that, and then I'm also seeing the advanced screening, the critic screening, because I do movie reviews yeah. on my YouTube channel. Uh, for Unforgettable. So speaking of your YouTube uh, channel and social media, this is a good time. If you guys uh, are just joining us or at any point join us, why don't we tell, I know you've got social media across the board a lot, but we can find you on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, yep. Instagram. Do you prefer any of them specifically or what's you, your situation? You, you nailed the four, uh, the four main ones. I think the three main social media that you want to be part of are the Instagram, which is John Based Out TV. Okay. Uh, Twitter, that's John Based Out. And uh, Facebook, which is John Based Out Fans. That's the main social media. And then um, YouTube, I always look at like a separate TV network. And okay. that's youtube.com slash John Baystow. And of course, you guys know when we actually put out this episode, separate of the Facebook Live, you will be able to find all that information in the YouTube uh, subheading and during the episode. So again, we're going to tape another episode of Meet the Host shortly, but uh, before we get that, let's have some fun with all the people on Facebook and anyone that decides to watch this. So let's start with... Uh, You've done you've done some acting ever, or yes. some type of. I mean, you've done infomercials, obviously, in a lot. So, uh, how does being an actor influence your kind of hosting style? Uh, well, I've been in about eight movies now. That's everything from like horror to comedy, um, and I've also done some other um, independent things, and I've been on a few TV shows and a lot of stuff with Fox News. Um, I would say that, uh, and then the hosting is obviously the fitness videos and the YouTube stuff, and then all stuff on AOL, MSN, USA Today, things like that. Um, the two don't really cross over that much because, um, sort of, uh, the acting, I would say, I mean, in a lot of the movies I'm in, I sort of die or, or do horrible things, horrible things. So I try not to carry <laughs> that over into hosting. Yeah, no, we don't want, we don't want horrible things in hosting, uh, or no dying for sure. Um. This is a fun one I like to ask everyone for Facebook Live purposes. If you knew at birth what your career would look like hosting, mm -hmm. uh, what would you have made improvements on or changed maybe when you were so young? Um, what I would have changed as far as going into hosting or yeah, anything. I mean, if you kind of like were able to, you know how sometimes you, you look back to, man, I wish I knew this then. And you oh. always feel like you know it later then. Mm -hmm. Anything you'd look back and you wish, I started doing this early, or, you know what I mean? Or yes. Uh, actually, there's not many regrets or changes I would have made um, uh, since the beginning with Fitness Made Simple. The only thing I would have done differently would be getting on social media earlier. Mm. That's the biggest thing. Um, I am a very late starter to Instagram. I, I've only been on since, I think, 18 months ago or two years ago. I was on a BlackBerry uh, back about two years ago. And trying to get on Instagram or Vine uh, with that would be like trying to get on with gum and a shoe. Yeah. And then what happened was uh, T-Mobile, shout out to you T-Mobile, I love you. There you go. Always takes care of me. Um, I wanted to get on Vine, so they gave me um, a Samsung Galaxy, which I was using, and then eventually gave me an iPhone, which I have now. Uh, both of them are great. And uh, ended up getting sort of decent sized audience on Vine. I did a series called Wake Up Words, which is a motivational uh, series that got almost a million followers and, before Vine died. And Vine is dead, by the way, but that doesn't mean Wake Up Words is, right? Because Wake Up That's Words, we're, we're going to talk about that. Wake Up Words, you can hashtag Wake Up Words and find all the information and all the self uh, help and uh, empowerment that you give on Twitter and Instagram. Yep. Uh, so just because Vine is dead does not mean that Wake Up Words is dead. In fact, I would say that Wake Up Words is going to be stronger with Instagram and Twitter moving forward. From his mouth to God's ears. But before we go to tape our episode, let me uh, ask you, because we haven't had yep. anyone really that's a Vine star, and I would consider you being someone super popular on Vine, mm -hmm. uh, amongst other things. Uh, well, thank you. Thoughts about 
Vine? Did you? How did you choose Vine as a, as a place oh. to use mm -hmm. uh, your talents? And what was the whole feeling of being all, you know having so many followers and and then them killing Vine? Just a general take on that. Okay, well, to answer your first question, um, uh, YouTube is very, very hard to grow on, I think. It's, it's almost like you could put in all this effort in making this great video, but it could be seen by nobody. So I'm a juice worth the squeeze type of guy. I like to get results from my effort. Vine, what I liked about it when I first saw it, why I ended up having T-Mobile give me the phones that could actually get on Vine, um, was they were short things. You could try different things, but you could also market it yourself. If you make relationships with other Viners, they could revine. There's a revine function yeah. where they could, you, so your work could be seen by other audiences. It may be just one video or so, but it was a way to actually actively grow your audience mm -hmm. if you were business oriented. With YouTube, you can't, usually you don't swap videos. You don't put your video on somebody else's channel and subscribers come to you the way Vine was. It was right. just something inherent that gave you more control where you could grow it yourself. And I, I capitalized on that feature, made something that was interesting, got the attention of some sponsors and things like that, and got some brand deals on it. That's beautiful. And I'm assuming T-Mobile's in there. T-Mobile does a lot of other good things, but they never sponsored a Vine. But but T-Mobile is, is a big 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 supporter with uh, with phones. Let's put it that way. Thank you. So much love and respect, T-Mobile. Shout out to T-Mobile. Now. Um, if T-Mobile wants to give me a deal or a sponsor, we can do like a tag team or whatever, just so you know. Anyways. Um, He's a good guy. Uh, yeah, thank you. So I think we should take the episode and we can come back to the Facebook Live soon. I do want to just make sure that as we're looking on live that we're good. I'm looking on the... Okay, cool. So I, I usually use the phone, but you're okay. So we're going to tape our episode. Uh, you were just like, all in the technology world. Well, it's a little confusing. He's got too. everything going on. Uh, I want to make sure. We're, so we're live. Uh, thanks again for you guys joining us. If you join us at a later date, uh, this is the Facebook Live for Meet the Host, and it's exciting. We're about to tape our actual episode. You will see this episode sometime in the next, uh, in the near future. Let's say that again. Remember, we get the mugs now. Uh, and we got Mr. Fitness himself. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. Um, this is exciting stuff. Water from and, the hotel. Uh, water water from the hotel. It's, it's nice water. Uh, so uh, it's not just pack this water. in your suitcase. Go home with extra. And um, and so I think we should we should tape the episode. You feel good? You got it. I'm all good. Yes. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna we're gonna move our eye lines over here. We're gonna set this up, and we'll start. Let's. Uh, oh, I'm touching it. See, silliness. Um, okay, cool. So we can tape again. One last time, guys. If you uh, are on social media, any platforms, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, uh, you gotta follow them because uh, please do. If, if you need, please follow me. If, if you need fitness advice, if you need a lot of tips, uh, he obviously has a ton and um, a lot of uh, self empowerment advice. That's. I think that's uh, seriously the key to what the message I want to bring to social media. I, I want to use it as a force for good. So many haters and so much negativity oh, is spewed on much, social media. Too much. And it's such a powerful force that if you can use it to motivate and empower people, I think you can change the world because there's so many people out there with great ideas and great talents and they're so afraid to express them and they just don't have the confidence in themselves and when they first even try to do something they get beaten down so quickly on social media that if you uplift them a little bit, you'd be surprised at the ripple effect they can cause of improvements in this world. Beautiful. That was already a tip right there. Let's just make sure we're going to make sure our volume is louder. We are also going to make sure we're set here and loud. Okay, so our volumes are up. Uh, I do want to just say uh, on our social media pages, thank you to uh, a bunch of the people that have uh, commented on Instagram. Uh, we appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, people said that this should be a good episode, and I agree. Oh, cool. I think so. Thank you, people. Yeah. You should so, give a shout-out to the names. Yeah, that's, well, to, I'm going to shout-out, that's right, Old Reed Studios. Yeah, this should be a good one, and uh, it's definitely going to be. And then there's a sport app. Yep, this is going to be solid. And, of course, the only MC, and you know about that, the Meet the Ho Show going coast-to-coast, coast. and James Lott Jr. having a good show. We will do that for you uh, and ourselves. Um and everybody else on Facebook Live, thanks, guys. Uh, okay, so uh, maybe we should check Twitter this last thing. Um, I saw shout out to someone awesome on Twitter, by yes. the way, uh, who uh, commented on one of the tweets or retweeted. Lots something. of yes, uh, yeah. I only got to comments. see. I only got to look really quickly before I came in here. And that was that was the first one I saw. That's beautiful. So someone awesome, someone awesome you much are, love and respect. Yeah, from John you, Vista. You you are named correctly. You are someone yeah. awesome. And this is gonna be awesome, right? So there we go. Um, 
All right, well, uh, we're going to move away from the Facebook Live for a little bit, and we'll take, but you guys are not leaving us because you can watch the episode now. Uh, and then uh, we'll be back with you to ask some more follow up questions. Uh, but time to tape another episode with the host, man. Here this you is go. Exciting. I love this stuff. I love sitting in the chair, meeting a new host. Uh, this guy's super uh, popular, too. Uh, all right, so uh, there we go. Uh, we'll start so we can meet the host. Training. Yeah. Um, Mike Rippy. I feel like it's like when when I had Andy in the seat. Yeah. Uh, you guys remember Andy? Andy. John tells me he knows Andy. This is amazing. Yeah. So, Andy uh, and I are, are brothers. Shout brother out to mother. you, Andy. Peake. Yes. Shout, Papa's shout out. Peak. Pa- Papa Peak's parenting, Papa Peak's. which you have to watch every Saturday, twelve noon on Eastern Time. Little Things Facebook. And uh, and just and Little Things Follow up because my mom was mentioning the she watched it and she thinks Andy's hilarious. So uh, that's that's great. Yes. Uh, shout out to my mom. Um, oh, you're not living until you watch Papa Pete's Parenting. I know. As soon as I'm done with this working on Saturdays on the road thing, trust me, I'm, I'm there. Because I'm all over the social media watching him do his thing. Uh, and shout out, Andy. Uh, thank you for the, the connection, too. Uh, okay, guys, uh, let's do this because uh, I'm excited to talk to you. i got some good questions for you. Um, okay. We'll do a, usually I have a, like a countdown and stuff, but mm-hmm. we're doing it here. So, uh, Editor, you'll be editing out his stage direction. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, put the phone away. Welcome to Meet the Host, the show where we flip the script on the host. Today, in studio, my name, Mike Rippey. You can catch me on social media at Mike Rips, but the fitness guru and host himself, John Bass now. Glad to be on Meet the Host. I am glad to have you in again. You guys, join the program. You can follow us on social media at Meet the Host. Meet the host show. You know all of the different uh, social media handles, but if it is Monday, it is Meet the Host, and that's why we have a new episode for you right now. So let's start it off with you, John Baystow. What do you host? Uh, okay, I host a show on YouTube called Culture Pop, which I take to the streets and ask a lot of uh, unusual questions on pop culture and entertainment news. Uh, that's number one. Okay, well, before we move on, mm-hmm. you said unusual questions. Yes. What's the most unusual question you've ever asked? Uh, the most unusual <laughs> question I have ever asked, well, a lot of times we have topics, okay, that could relate to pop culture and entertainment, but, okay. the, but the characters in the street are the funniest. So, for instance, one guy would, like, we'll get anything from pimps and drug dealers to businessmen to housewives. So one guy comes up with a sign and he goes, we'll do anything for weed. So I, so I said, give me a million dollars. Will you give me a million dollars? He didn't do it. Oh. And I had nothing from anyone. Well, you so know, that, that was the oddest question I ever asked him. I like it. That's funny. Okay, sorry. So I interrupted you, but yes. I had to know. So you, you the, the culture show? Yes. What else? Okay, Culture Pop, um, that's Entertainment Takes to the Streets. Yep. And then I host, uh, well, you guys may know Fitness Made Simple, which is a series of videos, um, which are on video and DVD form, and then also uh, taken to YouTube for Fit Now and Fit Meals, which are um, two fitness series that are on YouTube that I host. Uh, and then most, a lot of the things I po- also host are on AOL, MSN, USA Today, Huffington Post, uh, Hollywood Life, and that's um, various uh, news reports on um, anything from health and medical news to pop culture and entertainment news. And to just further what John has already told you, first, he's been featured on Fox, Sirius, uh, CW News, CBS News, the LA Times, the New York Times, uh, amongst a bunch of other uh, outlets and news organizations. That sounds really good. It sounded really good when I said it. But also, <laughs> let's mention this. Social media. You can find John on Twitter and uh-huh. YouTube at John Baysdow. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find him uh, on Instagram, John Baysdow TV, and also on Facebook, John Baysdow Fans. Because uh, if you weren't a fan, which you should have been, you are now. Please uh, become a fan. Yes. I love my fans. Yes. And uh, and, and I think we our fans are loving you. I feel like I... Well, I am, I'm feeling the love on Meet the Host. Good. Uh, we are super glad to have you. So, uh, not just a host. You're a motivational speaker. Yeah. A TV personality. And I'm obviously a fitness expert. Uh, thank you. That that it sounds like a lot. I, I think it one, is a lot. one of the things. Uh, I mean, I really, uh, I really like the uh, motivational speaking aspect of it, which I think ties all of the things together. Because um, becoming a host, uh, you have to, you know, how difficult the business is. You know how many people try to knock you down and how difficult it is to get in there. And I think 
the motivational, the self-empowerment thing is something you have to make as part of yourself, first of all. Right. And then if you can spread that to other people, it's all good. Uh, fitness is hugely motivational. It has all motivational roots. Uh, you can't change the body before you first make a decision in your mind to make that change. Mm, you guys hear that? You can't change the body till you first make a mental change Completely. up here. That's why most people fail, as a matter of fact. Um, I always say the mind holds the tools to build the body. And what that means is that you could have the best fitness program, you could have the best diet, you could have the best workout plan, you could have the best system in front of you. But if you don't first flip that switch in your head to make fitness a priority, you will never achieve the results or show the dedication you need to get those results to any fitness program. What's the, there's a probably a multitude of ways, and this is why you need to look at Fitness Made Simple, but what's the one tip to someone that's really struggling with any of this? What's like the first thing maybe mentally they can do? Uh, the first thing mentally you can do, you have to have a greater desire for change than comfort level with your current situation. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, if somebody is not totally, I like to say, uncomfortable, if you're not uncomfortable with your situation, you are not going to want to change it. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, like I was a bowling pin on legs. I had a big wide middle, long skinny legs, long skinny arms, and if I gained it anywhere is the midsection. I was so uncomfortable with how I looked and how I was feeling that I decided to investigate all different types of ways to change that. Sure. You have to, you have to have that. And then once you do decide to make a change. You have to use your brain, and nowadays with the web and everything, you have to research all the different things you hear. Because just because you've heard something like a no-fat diet or a no-carb diet or exercise every day or just exercise a few times a week or go heavy or go light, there's all these different conflicting plans. You have to research what you think is going to be the best for you. Because so many of those things, I mean, how I in the beginning when I started trying all those different things, I tried one approach, it would never give me the results that I wanted. Mm -hmm. Finally, after a year of trying like the no-carb diet, then the no-fat diet, then you know exercising every day, then exercising just a few times a week, and all these different things, and eating that or popping this magical pill or potion, I was nowhere near the results worth putting the effort that I was doing. Sure. And that's when I wanted to throw up my hands and quit and just say, this is the body God gave me, this is what Nate, I'm stuck with, just deal with it. And the one thing that stopped me was when I relied on myself. I sort of like didn't listen to what everyone else was telling me, and I realized there is no one approach to fitness. You have to follow what I call a multifaceted approach, which is the fitness triangle. It has three different sides, time-conserving workouts, lean muscle building, nutritional meal plans, and uh, op supplementation to maximize your gym and your kitchen efforts. When you follow that triangle, the ultimate structure in geometry, you can create your own ultimate structure, your own ultimate physique. But you have to do that comprehensive approach. There is no one way. That, that was incredible uh, information for anyone uh, to, to share with people to take already and you can tell just what that that you're so passionate about what you're talking about and that you're obviously knowledgeable you have to I think you have to be and I think becoming passionate and becoming knowledgeable is so key and that's why I always say um, even even if you come down with a medical issue or anything like that you should always Google you should always investigate first you should go to any expert you're going you should at least go with some sort of knowledge that you're not looking like a complete idiot and just listening to somebody because no one will ever put the priority on you like you will and nobody will ever have your best interest at heart like you will. So at least come in informed that you can ask some questions. Mm -hmm. And then if somebody's intimidated by your questions, then that's their, that's their issue, not yours. Okay, And that shows their lack of knowledge because if I'm, um, if I'm basically um, certain of what I'm saying, you can question me on anything and I'm going to give you my opinion and I'm going to respect you for basically doing some research. Sure. If somebody's intimidated by that, that's because there's cracks in the knowledge. And now we know why Wake Up Words is something that you do and what someone should uh, pay attention to because you are, uh, you have a lot of information to provide. And let's keep it going with that information. This is exciting. When did you begin hosting? Um, I Well, actually, I started hosting right out of school with hosting the fitness videos, Fitness Made Simple. And um, these, these videos were infomercials? Uh, the, actually, or what was a line of, it was a line of home videos, okay. Okay, which were DVDs. Sure. We call okay. them videos, but they were actually DVDs. Sure. Now you can down, now if you go to fitnessmadesimple.com, you can actually become a member and you can download everything and get it on your phone or whatever. Yep. But back then, it was back in like the early 2000s up to 2009, it was you know DVDs. Sure. So I was hosting those, and then from that I got, because people would see, and then of course I was on all the commercials, yep. which, which many of you may have ran seen, like 24-7 on every time. single TV network out there. <laughs> it was insanity. Um, yep. And the thing is, so because of that, and since I was on every commercial and, and talking and, and hosting that, I would get other opportunities to do different things. Beautiful. 
how would you describe the the evolution of your hosting style and how would just your general style of hosting be described as? Um, I think I try to be conversational with um, a, one step, I always call like a little step above adding the instructional level. It's okay. like it's like a friendly teacher, almost. I try to be friendly a, teacher. a friendly teacher. I like it, John. A, fr a, fr a friendly teacher that basically has a little bit more knowledge than you may have going in, only because I've done the research, but being conversational enough with it that I can impart it to you so that you understand in it. In an understandable way, which yes. I actually appreciate and like. Someone that you yeah. feel comfortable where you can actually be receiving of that information uh, and it to be and understanding. I, and I try to keep it... Um, as unscripted as possible, because I think when you try to stick to certain words, or you try to like get, because I mean, I come from a news background, journalism was my background, so you're used to news writing and, and certain words, and you're used to teleprompters and scripts, and I think sometimes if you can go off that, you can grab the viewer even more when you're relating to them. Make a better connection, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, what would you say your favorite part about hosting is? The favorite part about hosting is definitely being able to reach a, especially when you're doing hosting on TV that also is disseminated and um, you know proliferated on the web, is being able to reach a huge audience with one single message, um, and being able to get your message across that way um, and get your basic take on something. Because I think any good host, you always say you're impartial to some degree, mm -hmm. but everybody has a flavor. They add a little bit of flavor to whatever they're doing. Mm -hmm. And being able to get that across and you, sort of your take on this person or your take on this situation um, to mil potentially millions of people in one finite moment is it, really empowering and it's really exciting to me. On the flip side, what's the least favorite part that you have about hosting? When it's not something that I'm in control of that I'm hosting, mm -hmm. um, having to sort of uh, tailor my style to who's ever hiring me for that because there's certain parts with hosting like I like to you know uncover the nuggets that myself as a viewer wants to see mm -hmm. but then sometimes if you're hired by somebody there's certain minefields that you can't cross you know you can't tread here you can't tread there you can't tread in the other direction and so feeling restrained in that way is is probably the only drawback I see to it and I don't get restrained that often but, um, but, you know, because I, I really like to have a connection with the viewer where I'm basically trying to speak to myself as a viewer and what I know viewers want to hear. And I know that if I'm prevented from asking certain questions that I know they're dying to hear the answers of, that feels like I'm like being restrained the whole time. And this is, this is we hear this sometimes uh, from other hosts, uh, as far as you can get so much from these uh, programs, the advice and the mm -hmm. information that you're giving them uh, to, to ch kind of be authentic and and the connection that you're trying to make with your audience as a host is super important. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it's great to uh, hear that from from you. Is there a special way that you prepare for hosting uh, specific events or specific guests? Yeah, definitely. Do your research. That's a big thing with me. I've known a lot of people who can be good, and actually, when you see them on TV, um, you think that they're 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 good, which is a great act, I think. But I, I always I came from a, a research background, mm -hmm. I guess, with news and everything. So when I go to host an event, or when I go to an award show, or when I go to speak to a person, I try to have as much knowledge of that person's background or that event's background that I can, so I can sort of bring to the table some things that other people may not, because they didn't do that research. And it's also things that I may want to know, because a lot of times when you're speaking to a person in particular, everybody knows what that person has already shown the public. Okay, everybody knows that public persona, but if you do a little bit of research into their background and you could bring up some things, you could sort of find a way of how that person got to where they got to, something that maybe not in the script that they're normally talking about, yeah. but little nuggets of information that all of a sudden, like for instance, somebody may say they grew up on a farm and they, had, they were sheep farming and they had a lot of pets and then that's what triggered them to want to you know, get involved in an animal show. All of a sudden, a person at home in that same situation gets inspired. Well, I never thought I could be on a show because I live on a farm and I'm not in the TV world or anything. Yeah. But knowing that that person came from that same background gives makes that connection, gives them hope, and inspires them. And that one little bit of knowledge can change that person's life. So I just want to touch on the research part, which is great advice, obviously. Do your research, but do extra research. Is Someone's watching, okay, that sounds great, do my research. How do I do my research? Oh, basically, if you if you have a person, you Google that person, you look at different articles, you, you go not just to the first page, but you see something mentioned in one article, let's say 
that they had this job or this other job that's not mentioned in their bio, and you go then to, let's say, the school or the job where that was, and you try to Google different terms and everything about that person that may not be on first thought, okay? And then you can bring something new to the table that every other host or every other anchor might not have talked about that person with. Granted, you're still going to talk about their movie. You're still going to talk the talking points that they want to talk about. But if I can deliver one thing, one extra bonus thing that everybody else hasn't said, that makes me feel like I actually did a job and I yeah. did something different. You've done your job, but you even exceeded doing your job by bringing that one special nugget. And uh, what I like to actually call that is kind of ninja research. Be a ninja. So uh, Ninja research. Do, I will, do, I will do, take that. Do your research, but be ninja about it. Yeah. Not just the stuff. And, and nowadays, in 2017, doing research is so much easier with the ability of technology and the internet to get you a lot of places quickly. It's scary, too. But it is scary. How, how many times do you see somebody on a show? Like, I mean, I've had to work now doing pop culture news and everything, as I said, with AOL and MSN and, and stories there. I'll be researching somebody on Real Housewives of one of the franchises or something like that, and all of a sudden, you know, you'll see out of the blue, this person may have been on this, the show now for three years, but all of a sudden they say, uncovering her secret criminal past. Because somebody finally decided to Google me. Her criminal past happened like 20 years ago it's or 15 there. years ago. It's been there. Yeah. But you finally look, and this is a whole new story. But, because, but the whole reason people started Googling that is because, or looking into that, is because that person reached a certain level of relevance That's where somebody true. cares to dig that deeply. When you're on season one, they're just getting yeah. to know you. They don't know if you're going to be around. Yeah. By the time you become part of pop culture, then they want to find the chinks in the armor. Yes. Once you get big enough, they want to yeah. take you down. Yeah, I like that. Well, the me well that, that's the thing about the media. If you're smart, the hardest thing in this business, internet, everything included, is getting the eyeballs on you, getting somebody to care. Because you, well, you can reach, reach millions of people nowadays that you could never reach before, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But now everybody can reach millions of people, yeah. so it's diluted. So how are you going to beat the competition? Trying to s cut through the clutter is so, so difficult, and getting the eyeballs on you is the hardest thing. If you do get a viral video, if you do get in the public consciousness some way, always remember this. The media loves to hail you. They love to make you a star. But then they love to nail you. And they love mm. to see you drop. So play them and play them smartly. When you're up on top, jaywalk. Do, I'm not saying jaywalk, but don't do a crime. But just do something, do a little, do a little something and so that they don't look necessarily have to dig any deeper. Did we freeze? I think we froze. I think we froze. Hold on one second. That oh, was amazing. Point. I think your, your note was so good. We're, we're, you, you said hail you and nail you. Yeah, it, well that, yeah that's, that's my biggest thing because the media loves to hail you and, and, oh. and loves to nail you. Give me one second. Yeah. That's unbelievable. It's nothing, the only thing that's okay. is change. Facebook Live, thank you guys for joining us. I see the new people that have joined. We're fixing the other. We have, we we have, have a two, technical difficulty. We have right two there. MacBook things going on. Oh, that was crazy. Okay, we're going to bring it back. Let's see. And I think that, that must have. That was you said hail you and nail you. Hail you and nail you, yeah. And that was and I we're still going on froze. Facebook Live. Yeah, we're still on Facebook Live. Facebook so we'll Live gets to see the whole behind the scenes. Okay, we're we're gonna we're gonna we'll be able to cut that for the the video. That's fine, but we're gonna go right back. That's the first time we've had technical difficulties, but that's okay. Uh, we'll we'll bring it back. Um, let's let's. Do I have to go back on that? No, no, no. Uh, the hell! I'm still caught up on the hell you. Yeah, the media loves to hell you, and then the media loves to nail you. That was a. That was a, you have thrown some nuggets in already that are on point. So if you guys on Facebook Live stuff, the hell you and the nail you part, that was incredible. Um, all right, so we for the first time we had a little technical difficulty. We're gonna go back to. Uh, okay. We're back recording, uh, and we can cut it in, uh, and it's okay. We'll the, we'll just bring it back. God bless you, editor. Uh, yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Alex Gal. You got extra work. Uh, no. Um, do you want to do you want to further that point now? What, sure. What do you want? Yeah. To, let's. What, what do you want to ask me? I, I want to start off with the hell you now. Yeah. Okay. All sure. right. Because that, that's too good to not have it. Uh, okay. Okay. So talking about hell you and nail you, mm -hmm. uh, I've never heard of this before. Well, I'm, I'm I'm surprised because it's been around since the media got started. Yeah. The media loves to hail you on your way up yes. because they love to make a star. But the only thing constant in this business is change. So once you become a star and you're known and everything like that, you can become boring. Mm -hmm. That's when they like to nail you, okay? That's why it's a little roller coaster. And if you're really smart, like some of the really smart stars, you'll notice that they will reinvent themselves, they'll do things, there'll be little negative stories about them, keeps them in the press, then they overcome a problem, keeps them in the press. It's a game. 
And unfortunately, you can't play the game by what should be. You have to play the game by what is, mm -hmm. and that's the way the game is. Okay. Uh, just one of already many different things you've taught me and also our viewers uh, and, your, and your saying. It's fantastic. Let's talk about some of the guests you've had. You've done so much. Do you remember a hardest guest and why they were the hardest guest? A hardest guest? That how hard how? Most difficult in any way that you find difficult. And you don't have to name the person, let's say. Okay. Uh, you can if you want. But, okay. I mean, what was it that made someone a really difficult interview, uh, difficult guest? You know what I mean? Okay. Um, all right. Well, I, I fortunately, I have not had many hard guests. They, I, 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 I tend to get along extremely well with the guests, and I like them a lot. Yes. Um... Funny because I just mentioned Real Housewives. I will not name any names. I will not name any names. But she's done this before, so you can Google it and see who I'm talking about. Um, I'm friends with a number of the Real Housewives, and they're dreams on my shows. They've been on New Media Stew, which is a show I host. They've been on Culture Pop, all these different things. But there's one who was she was very sweet on two previous episodes, and the third episode she was going through some issues and everything. She actually walked off the set. I mean, it, it asked a question. I'm talking about Mike asked a question, went like this, walked off the set. So, okay, the hardest, I guess walking off the set would be the hardest one. That, what well, well, you, I mean, how do you go up from that? Right. I mean, Did she come back? Oh, uh, no, she never she, came she, back. It was a walk-off. It, 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 it was a walk-off. It was a walk-off. You know, you almost want to do like the little Ashley Simpson jig that she did on Saturday Night Live when, uh, you know, she screwed up with the song. Oh, <laughs> that was bad. Uh, on the flip side of that, I like to ask, and, mm -hmm. and you get along with most of your guests, and you can see yes. why, obviously, you're very uh, personal, and you, uh, you have a lot of information to share. Uh, what makes someone an easy guest? Uh, someone who doesn't answer in one word answers. Okay. Great. Somebody who is real and tries to. Um, nobody gets here by accident. Um, so when I see somebody that I'm talking with as a guest, especially in the entertainment industry, and nobody falls into some success, nobody steps into talent. There is no such thing as an overnight success. If you see an overnight success, it's like the tip of the iceberg. They've been working 15 years to be there. Um, so I think that a good guest is somebody that lets that be known because I don't like it when somebody tries to make it, oh, I just happened to step into this because it gives false hope to a lot of people out there because nobody who's trying to do this is going to do this without busting their asses, having a ton of doors slammed in their face, having a lot of obstacles to overcome. So I like it when the guests are real and they talk about their challenges because anybody out there who's achieved any type of success has faced many challenges and has faced many slam doors in their face. Very true. Great advice. One of the things I like to do is get advice. You've been giving advice already a lot. I want to just touch on one thing you said. You talked about how uh, someone that's an easy guest is someone that doesn't give one word answers. What about when you get a guest that gives one word answers? Do you have any tips or advice? Always on follow. How to follow that? Oh, easily follow. Follow questions. Just follow. follow. I, Firstly, the biggest tip is you never afraid. If you have a guest that you know is going to be challenging, mm -hmm. okay, um, or or nervous, and sometimes it's not even that they're 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 being they, they're intentionally doing it. They're just nervous. Sure. You don't give them an opportunity with a question. You don't say, um, uh, "Did you enjoy your time on that show?" You you would say, "So what was your time on that show like?" You always phrase it in such a way that yes or no is not an option. See more advice. Never use. Uh phrase it so that yes or no is uh, an option. Uh, I'm learning as you're telling, not just our, not just our followers, me too. Uh, I love it. Uh, do you prefer shorter or longer segments? Uh, as far as me hosting them or me being interviewed on them? No, you, be, you being the host. Me being the host. Yeah. Um, I mean, would you rather sit and do like a five minute interview or you want to do a long form 40 minute interview with a, with a guest? Depends on the guest. Definitely, okay. definitely depends on the guest. So, uh, definitely depends on there. There are people that I'd love to be out of the room in five minutes with. That's and the real housewife guest. No, <laughs> they're all nice except for this one. Actually, she was a dream on the first two shows. I'm not going to mention any names. <laughs> Google it. I'm not mentioning any names. She's at least on the third third season. You just gave that away. What? You're right? He, oh she's yeah. No, no, no. She's, no, she's, she's, she's very no. She's very well known. But yeah. I mean, it, it, it's modus <laughs> operandi. She's done it before. Yes, of course. And after. But anyway. Um. But but. People have issues. There's, there's, there can come a time when I've been having a bad day that I'll walk off the set too. So I, I can't, I don't judge. Let's put it that way. No. One thing I always say, and I have a wake up words about this, is I, everyone you meet every day is facing issues you have no clue about. Mm -hmm. So don't judge. Um, however, I just, I just say in that situation, I've always been very nice and very respectful, and we have, a, we had a very good rapport. So I didn't appreciate that personally because I've never done anything 
you know, to merit that. But you, so, so the segment uh, duration is really dependent on the guest. The segment duration is dependent on the guest. If it's somebody that I want to know about a lot, I like longer interviews. And I like also doing um, an interview in a situation that's not necessarily always, I mean, there's a sit down interview, but then also maybe seeing the person in their own environment, maybe doing an activity with the celebrity or with the, the guest that I'm interviewing that they love, and maybe they're teaching me or showing me a different activity. Well, you're a fitness guy. Maybe you could teach me something before we're done here. But before we get to that, uh, developing your own questions, is that preferred? Or let's say you go somewhere and they develop the questions for you. How, how's that? What's your feeling? I actually, to be honest with you, and I don't think many people would say this, but I like both. Um, because some, I like to develop my own questions, obviously, first. Okay. But there's some things that I'm not going to think about. I like having a writing team or somebody else, because I like somebody else bringing something to the table. that I can okay. say, hey, I didn't think of that. Interesting. Because I'm not going to think of everything necessarily. And sometimes I'll see a question, and I'll go, damn, I wish I thought of that. You should have told me it beforehand. Interesting. I like it. Okay, I haven't really heard that too much. Uh, you've done a lot, so this one's uh, may, may be a difficult one for you. Dream hosting role. Is there a role out there or a role that if you could create the role, what's the yes. dream hosting role? Oh, Easy, easy question. The end game has always been and will always be until I get it having my own talk show, um, like an Oprah or Dr. Oz type talk show, okay. um, where I mean, basically, there's entertainment, there's interesting topics, but it, the talk show always leaves the viewer with a beneficial takeaway. It's not a talk show for entertainment or fluff purposes only or enjoyment only. There's always a beneficial takeaway that they can use something to improve their lives. So is that this? This isn't Jerry Springer. Is it, is it more Which important? I think is, which I think yeah, he's, 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 he's a great, great. guy. Sure. He's, he's also very funny. Absolutely. Is it more Maury Povich? No, it's more like Dr. Oz and Oprah. More Dr. Oz and Oprah. Yeah. It, do we have a time slot? Do we have Yeah, I'd like to bring it into the nighttime, though, not necessarily, not necessarily, not necessarily daytime. There we go. So it's a I don't, nighttime version. I would like it shows. to be nighttime, and I could even, I would like it even to be. And I could add a little bit of edge to it because I'll put a little edge on that. I would like, I would love to have because I'm a vampire at heart and I am nocturnal. So I would love to have a nighttime talk show, but along the lines of those two. Okay. With a little bit of an edge. With a little bit of an edge. And so there you, there you go. Any network out there? Yeah. Bravo, E, Spike, um, Freeform. USA, Freeform. Okay. Anybody, Comedy Central even. Comedy Central. They I like would they love can. to do that. I would love to do that. Watch my clips on Red Eye. Pretty fun. I there, see. Uh, look at what we're getting out of this. I love it. Uh, you know the dream hosting role. What would you call the show? Would it just be John Base Down show? Right now with Base Down. Right now with Base. Right, right now, now with Base Down. Uh, you're you're ready. Uh, speaking of hosts, we I, I named a couple of these midday hosts. Uh, do you have a favorite host, or do you look around the, the hosting uh, sphere and uh, and network and say, man, I really appreciate this host, or there's this this one that I really look up to and want to be like, or uh, take tips from. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I already mentioned her. I think, I think, I mean, growing up, especially, I mean, I always looked up to Oprah. Sure. Um, I, it was funny because I, I guess, I became known, or, I mean, like when I was on the cover of the LA Times and they called me like a household name and, and stuff like that, they would always ask me all these fitness type questions, and they say, "Who, growing up, did you look up to in fitness? And did you always want to be like the next Jack Lane? Did you always want to be the next Tony Little, or something like that?" And I said, "Oh, those people did great things," but I said, "I never even thought of that. It yeah. was never in my lexicon of what I was thinking of." I said, when I was growing up, I always wanted, I always looked up to people like Oprah and Joel Osteen, who's not a host, but a pastor, but sort of, I mean, a motivational speaker. he's a motivational speaker, but I looked up to Oprah and Joel, and believe it or not, a third one that I always put in that category on these interviews was Kathy Griffin. Mm. Um, and, and granted, she's been a host and a comedian, and everybody would be like, those three, it's like, which one of these things is not like the other, because yeah. Oprah, Joel, and Kathy. But Kathy Griffin, I love, because that's a woman who, and I've gotten to meet her and become friends with her backstage and she was I went to a few of her shows and she invited me backstage and I was in the friends box and things like that um, but that's a woman who has been throughout her career always told no or hell no or you're not this you're not that you're not the other thing but she never quit she never let the haters win she never let the doubters or the naysayers win and then by the time I had met her, when she was doing like my life on the D list and stuff like that, she was riding a career wave of success greater than anything she'd ever experienced before. So haters can suck it, and Ooh. and she basically proved everybody wrong. But the best thing I liked about her was not only did she prove them wrong, but she never quit. With all those negative things and all those doors slammed in her face, she never quit. Never That's quit. what admired me, made me admire her. Oprah and Joel, what I admire about them 
is that number one, they do things that improve other people's lives, okay? They give people hope, they give people knowledge, they give people empowerment to go better themselves. But also what I like about those two is they have power. They are not necessarily hired by somebody. They will be on TV as long as they want to be on TV. They do not, they're not dependent on somebody giving them another job. I've known many people who are riding high for a year and then can't pay their rent the next year. Yeah. I know many people who become household names and then you know, have absolutely nothing to show for it five years later because they're dependent on somebody else hiring them. Yeah. Oprah and Joel have their own empires. So they, they can continue to do the magic that they're doing for as long as they want. What we do here at Meet the Host uh, since we started is we have uh, each host that comes on the program, they, uh, they write a quote uh, and they sign it and then we try to donate it to a charity of their choice. I got two Sharpies. Oh, okay. Uh, choose whatever you want. And, uh, and uh, there it is. And then we're going to recall this and then we're going to try to make sure and see if we can raise any type of money uh, for any charity that you believe in. Uh, even if it's just a dollar, uh, I'll donate a dollar. Uh, but we'll get whatever it is, and uh, and it's just a cool thing we're doing here at Meet the Host, and um, so this is exciting. It's uh, I love it, and uh, this is great. Uh, I'm about to share it with you guys. Uh, believe in yourself, and you can accomplish anything. Your friend. Your friend, uh, John Based Out, and uh, right now with Based Out, one day. I like that, yes. That's, that's great. Make it happen, uh, people. Watch so, me yeah. the host and make that happen. And, uh, before we let you go, because there's uh, there's so much we could talk to you about, um, talk about your hashtagging of Wake Up Words and how uh, that started in Vine. Now Vine mm -hmm. doesn't exist anymore, right. but it's on Instagram, it's on Twitter, and you're doing this daily, weekly. What are you doing? Um, okay, it's good. Well, first of all, on Vine it was uh, successful, which is good. I've only just brought it to Instagram, okay. and so I'm starting with um, the existing Wake Up Words, which obviously are six seconds in length because Vine was limited to six seconds. There you go. And I just was testing out the words, and it's funny that Mike brings this up because I only started it, I think, last week well, um, I, on the Wake Up Words. And I was doing my research. Yeah. So I looked at some of it, and so I wanted you know you started it a week and a half ago on Instagram, whatnot, and don't right. forget. That's John Based Out TV on Instagram. Yes. But um, we, are you doing it every couple days? What do you feel like? What, what, we're, what we're going to do now, what I was just going to say, sure. um, is it's going to be designed since a lot of people are liking it and it's getting some views and it's getting some nice comments and things like that. I think I'm going to try to do, uh, since I also have a back pile of a few, sure. um, I'm going to try to do Wake Up Words Monday through Friday. Uh, do a Wake Up Words that's five a week um, as one of my Instagram posts. Right. And then, um, and moving forward from there, and I think I'm going to mix in, in amongst the smaller wake up words from Vine because there's a bunch of them that are very applicable right now. Um, some longer ones because you can go up to a minute on, on Instagram. Instagram. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so you guys can check that, and there, when you uh, follow Wake Up Words, you'll hear positivity and uh, self empowerment, and you've shared a lot of that with us today on Meet the Host. Uh, uh, it's also on Twitter, right? Yeah. Uh, every. I try to keep things really simple because every one of these platforms is work. It, yeah. it, it's work, and I, I really see, um, I, and, and I like to talk straight to the viewers and, and, and the, the people, obviously followers here on Meet the Host, because I always like to give a beneficial takeaway. Um, juice has to be worth the squeeze, so I look at, as far as now platforms, I try to stick with Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook as the three social media. That's pretty much it at the moment, and then YouTube I always look at as a separate network. That's totally different, but by lead, uh, as far as social media, is Instagram. Yeah. I think Instagram is going to be a huge, I follow what Gary Vaynerchuk says, another person I look up to actually, and he's been on my show. Um, I think that Instagram is going to be a huge force in both uh, brand influencers and also as a social media force for many years to come and it's only gonna get bigger. And I think uh, it already has been, and I think you're absolutely right that it's con con continuing to grow. And that's why uh, here at Mythos, we're trying to uh, make the Instagram platform bigger and uh, one of the ways that we can do that is by having uh, guest hosts like yourself come on our program uh, to uh, share your story uh, to help us share our story uh, and share the story together before I get you out of here it would be uh, silly of me not to ask it well you told us about someone that wants to change their life and how they can do that uh, and they can find out more information uh, at fitness made simple uh, dot com, right? Or actually the best one to go, well, yeah, if you want to go fitness, yes. Fitnessmadesimple.com, become a member. You can work out with me on the daily. You can get all the Fitness Made Simple nutrition programs, yes. workout programs. 
Uh, but the main site you want to go to is johnbasedow.net. Right. Um, I do awesome. a lot of motivational speaking, so if you have a corporation or a school or you want to book me for something like that, we can do that there. But also, um, that's a place where um, you know you can get a lot of like other motivational tools, and it's also the home of all the social media of mine. So if you're ever in doubt, like if you Google or go to John Based on Instagram, you, there's a few of us, a few, a few fake me's floating around. You can always go to the real Instagram profile straight from there, the real Twitter straight from there, and the real Facebook straight from there. But this is the real John Based. I swear, it's so they not say. a fake one. And I <laughs> hope that this uh, this program has been uh, the juice has been worth the squeeze for you coming on. Uh, this guy hustles. I respect him, man. I respect him. He hustles. Right. We are in a hotel room doing this show. In your I city. love it. It's, and it's, and this it's is the great. way I roll, actually. This is what I usually do, so I'm used to it. And, uh, and so thank you guys so much for joining us for another episode of Meet the Host. Where can everyone follow you on social media? Uh, social media, Instagram, John Bastow TV, Twitter, John Bastow, YouTube, John Bastow, and Facebook, John Bastow Fans. And of course, we're going to share all that with you in the YouTube subtext, and of course, on the screen right now. Follow him again at johnbastow.net for all the information. Follow me at Mike Rips on social media. My name is Mike Rippy, the host of Meet the Host. But again, it's Monday. Follow us at meetthehostshow.com at Meet the Host across the social media platforms. We're back here every Monday with a new episode of Meet the Host. Thanks so much for joining us. Till next Monday, we'll see you then. Cheers. Thanks for coming on. And much love and respect. That's much what we usually love do. Get and it. respect. Yeah. Much love and much respect. Love and respect. He got it. We'll see you next time. Cool. All right, so before <laughs> we go back to the Facebook Live, and shout out to everyone on Facebook Live. I Hello, try to get Facebook to those comments. Live. I see that there are comments and stuff coming in, but if we can... It says, um, enjoy John Basedow. Great saying to sign off. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Thank you, Helene Goli. There we go. Rip, Helene Goli Brippy. And where to get your stuff? Well, we told you. And then I'm going to see if we can scroll up and get more. But before we let you go, the only thing... Oh, oh, if we can get one shout out um, oh, on the sorry. screen where you do, I'm John, and whatever With it you? is to yep. say, mm -hmm. I'm going to move out, and you say, oh. and this is Meet the Host or whatever. Okay, and you're like, sitting? I'm, okay. I'm John, and I'm on Meet the Host. Whatever Stay sitting or what? Yeah, whatever okay. you want. This is your time. Okay. It's all for you. Right now? Yes, sir. Hey, gang. I am John Bastow on Meet the Host. Much love and respect. Boom. I'll do one more. Uh, sure. Yep. That was great, but do it one more. Yeah, okay. I'm going to meet you for this. Cool. I'm going to pick. And what is up, gang? It's John Bastow. I hope you join me on Meet the Host, one of my favorite shows. And this time you can meet me. Much love. And respect. Love it. Great. Uh, uh, perfect. Okay, let's see if we can uh, go Wait, back to the meet. We're going to turn the, the taping off. That was the show. Uh, okay. That was good. We're still on Facebook Live. Uh, and uh, questions I still have. Um, so oh, we're, I, oh, we're back to that. Back to okay. just a couple more minutes here for the Facebook Live. Thank this, you guys. Couch, this couch has a huge indentation. Yeah, so people, no, 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 so people on Facebook Live. I'm sitting on a pillow because otherwise I'd be way down like this. <laughs> I love it. Uh, <laughs> That's how we do. So, okay, perfect. Uh, Adrian Bank joined us and she asked, can you tell us, well, you did tell us, tell us what you're the host of. You already told us that. Okay. Uh, uh, given the opportunity, which charity organization would you spearhead? Uh, oh, if I had to pick one right now? Sure. Uh, Humane Society of New York. Humane, any specific, Humane Society of New York. Any specific reason? Uh, yes, because they are a no-kill shelter. I do work with them. I am, I love helping animals, and I've uh, promoted them in many, many different ways. And I think they do amazing, amazing work at finding um, homes for dogs that are abandoned, gotten from other shelters and also just in need of somebody to somebody that's going to love them instead of somebody that's been a complete bastard and abused them. Any special connection to dogs or any reason? Uh, I've always had dogs. Um, I've also worked with another charity. The other charity I was going to say um, is Dogs for the Deaf, which is another charity that I've worked with um, that not only gives dogs to the deaf but also uh, rescues dogs from shelters. But I've always been, I've always felt, even as a little kid, um, you know, a, a closeness to animals. I could name pretty much any animal in the zoo by the time I was five years old. Fun fact that most people don't know about that me. Fun fact. Uh, yeah, but uh, but as far as dogs, I've always had dogs all my life, and I felt a, felt a very very special connection to them, and I want to do anything I possibly can to help them. All right, cool.
cool. We're going to try to make uh, a little donation and whatnot to both of those uh, organizations uh, when we can. And don't forget, someone's got to vote. you gotta, you got to help us with this. Uh, last question. Uh, have you ever had a moment in the normal conversation where uh, just, you know, anyone, just normally, and your host comes out? Like the host, the host version of you comes out. Oh, yeah. Does oh, it happen yeah. all the time, sometimes? How, how what is this? Um, oh, Yes, yes. It, first of all, it happens all the time when, when new people come up. How did you get into fitness? How did you get into TV? How did you do that? It's basically the same canned answer. Well, well, so, and I'll be, I'll, I'll be actually thinking of the words in my head just because I've, I've had to answer those questions so many times mm -hmm. over and over again. So I like it when somebody comes up with different questions because then, um, I mean, every, you could read about those answers pretty much anywhere, and I could pretty much say them the exact way they're written because right. a lot of reporters will write them the exact way you say them. But um, but it's nice when you come up with different things like you did today. I tried. You came up, you came up with a lot of unusual questions. Nobody has ever asked me who I who I dislike the most interviewing. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna be honest. People kind of you know you gotta you gotta at least ask a couple of hard ones. I like you know, no, I like to, and it was you know. and, and, and it was good. I would never I never want to out anybody and exactly. say and say well, the name. That's what I say. But, Don't but, say but, names. It's more about. But um, you'd have to be Helen Keller not to be able to Google the information on that person. <laughs> sounds like Joe Zanner or something. Uh, <laughs> no. All right. Uh, I'm just throwing out there. Uh, <laughs> anyways, you have to get out of here. We appreciate your time so much. Thanks so much for coming on. Meet the host. It was a blast, man. Yeah. It was uh, a blast having you And of time. course, thank you guys for watching and chiming in for another episode of Meet the Host and everybody that joined us on Facebook Live. And uh, you can share this because just because you didn't watch it live doesn't mean you can't watch it uh, on tape delay uh, at any point. Uh, you can learn a lot because that was really informative. I'm going to go back and learn uh, everything that you have uh, informed because you had a lot of information that I was... Uh, at some points taking in at the same time trying to remember that I'm not just uh, listening I'm actually hosting that makes so, me feel really uh, good okay. yeah there was a lot there that was really good and uh, I feel like there was a lot of quotes that we gotta write down we're gonna share them on our social media with you guys uh, throughout one last quote weeks, please one last quote that I've uh, I, I just came up with it recently and it, but it's just been catching on my fire and it's so true and it's to anybody who's trying to achieve uh, it's to anyone who's trying to achieve a dream right now hustle and grind until you no longer have to be introduced. Biggest thing I can say to you, what it means is that no matter what you want to do, figure out what you want to do, but then you got to put in the work. It's not going to just come to you. Put in the work, hustle and grind to the point that everybody knows your name because I can tell you from experience that if somebody knows you when you walk into a room, you are a hundred times better than if, than if somebody doesn't know you when you walk into a room. And it doesn't matter if they know you and like you or know they know, as long as they know your name pretty much, you have a certain amount of gravitas that you do not have, you know, if you go in there unknown, no matter what anybody else has said about you beforehand to that person. Great. Just more and more uh, tremendous advice. Uh, all I ask is when you do get that show, uh, you don't forget Meet the Host. And, and you uh, can come on as a guest. That would be exciting. Uh, that would be great. Well, we... Uh, we, uh, we, we are glad that you stopped by because this was amazing. It was a great uh, opportunity for me to meet you and, uh, and share with our viewers uh, and your viewers uh, the amazing uh, information that you really gave. And you did, no, no lie, give a lot of cool stuff. Um, very informative. If you're trying to be a host, you want to be a host sometime down the road, you're a host struggling fitness-wise, anything. There's a lot that you learned from today uh, at Meet Those. So thanks so much for joining us for another Facebook Live. From New York, the hotel room in the city. That's New right. York. That's the, that's right the by place. Times Square. We are very close to Times Square. Uh, he's got to go because he's got a lot of stuff to do. He's super popular, and, uh, and we're going to go. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.